Welcome to Electro Online, when we actually try to explain how those radio beams are produced in pulsars, well, it's not as easy as it may sound. You hear terms such as synchrotron radiation, and how does it actually work? Well, let me try to explain a few fundamentals in order to make it easier to figure out how radio beams are sent in both directions along the axis of the magnetic field. So first of all, synchrotron radiation is produced when charges move around in circles. Now when you have something that like, looks like this, where let's say an electron goes around in circles, we have what we call centripetal acceleration, that's acceleration towards the center of the rotational motion, which causes radio radiation, or not necessarily radio radiation, it depends upon the speeds and, and the frequency, we have radiation going in both directions, and the direction is not very precise. In other words, radiation is being sent in all directions, in one to one direction and in all directions, all angles I should say, in the other direction. But as the object begins to move faster, and the speeds of the object, like electrons, start approaching the speed of light, then we have a much greater, what we call centripetal acceleration, and we have in the direction of travel, and of course you can see that the spencil beam is going to go around like that as it goes around, but in the direction of motion of the charge, we have a much more powerful and much more directed and much more narrow beam of radiation that is emitted from the charge. And of course now we're not talking about one charge, but we're talking about gazillions of charges moving in that direction. So we have a pencil beam of radiation going off in the direction of travel. A second fundamental principle with electrons and magnetic fields is that let's say you have a magnetic field that goes from top to bottom, from ceiling to floor, and you inject an electron into that field. What happens is, if you use your left hand rule, you take your fingers, you point them in the direction of motion of the electrons, then you curl your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, and your thumb will point in the direction of the forces against the electric charge, in this case the electron. So it's feeling a force that's causing the electron to go around in circles. And so that's part of the driver of the synchrotron motion. So when electrons come into contact with a very powerful magnetic field, and we saw in the previous video how powerful these magnetic fields are, how strong they are, then the electron starts zipping around in very tight circles at very high velocities. And then it sets a very strong electric field that shoots the particles out in both directions, so they go spiraling upward at very high velocities, sending beams of radiation in that direction as well. In addition to that, we have the production of gamma rays. Now, very powerful gamma rays can be used to produce electrons and positrons. Positrons are the antiparticle of the electron, and so we produce electron-positron pairs in a cascade format. So, in other words, there's so many gamma rays produced that we produce enormous amount of electrons and positrons, and they go cascading out, causing the radio emissions. So, in other words, what we have observed, if we see particles that move out along the direction of the magnetic field at enormous speeds, speeds reaching the speed of light, and therefore in the direction of that motion you get very powerful radiation, and I'm missing an end there in my radiation, and so that's how those radio signals are produced. Now of course since the, uh, the neutron star is rotating about the axis of rotation, that beam then goes rotating around, kind of making a cone shape, and then if the, at one point in time the beam is pointing directly in the position where Earth is at, then we see these flashes of, of, of uh, magnetic, uh, electromagnetic radiation, radio radiation, every time the beam passes in that line of sight. But it's the, it's the synchrotron motion caused by electrons being injected into the magnetic field to production of powerful gamma rays, then the cascading of electrons and positrons, which then get pushed to very strong electric fields into the both directions, opposite in direction, along the line of the magnetic fields, and that causes these very powerful radio radiation to be emitted in the direction of travel based upon the synchrotron uh, radiation principle. So the forces they feel is the combination of the electric field forces plus the combination of the magnetic field forces. The magnetic field forces cause it to rotate within the field, and the electric field accelerates it out in both directions, causing the radiation then to move or to go out in the direction of travel. It's complicated, it's modeled, these are theoretical models, of course we're not there taking close observations, what we do see in the end, that we see these 
these uh, charged particles moving in both directions at very high velocities near the speed of light anytime we have a pulsar uh, or we have other um, engines uh, like black holes that shoot these particles out at very high velocities causing these kind of radiation to exist. So it's what we observe and it's what we model to try and explain the origin of that radiation and that is pretty well the way we think of course the way we theorize how everything happens. This we're positive of, this here is a theorized model that explains pretty well what we think is happening there. And that's the explanation we have for that powerful radio radiation coming from pulsars. So if it wasn't for the electron, you wouldn't see it? If it wasn't for the charged electron shooting out at high speeds, we wouldn't see that. So the magnetic field wouldn't do any, it's, it's not the magnetic field that we see, it's the electron shooting out. It's charges, field. that's correct, it's the charges that are being shot out near the speed of light that produce the electromagnetic radiation. Hence that's right. the pulsar. Hence the pulsar. Yep, that's it. Yeah, without those fast-moving charges, like this, this electron, electron like that, you wouldn't see those the radiation. What's the, I don't understand about the radiation lobes. Well, when you have charges move around in circles, you have radiation. The radiation goes along the path of the direction of the, of the velocity of the electrons. The faster you move, the, more, the narrower and the more powerful the radiation becomes in the direction of travel. And that's what we call synchronon, synchrotron radiation. So we have electrons going around like this and zipping out along the path of the electric field that produces that radiation.